Hi there, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be sewing the Alley Glasses Case by Unicat's Patterns. Um, I have made so many of these and it is such a good pattern. Um, it's easy to follow, doesn't take up a lot of materials, really, really quick to put together. I would definitely say it's beginner and domestic machine friendly. Uh, so I hope you give it a go. It's just got a simple zipper opening. It's bound on the inside. Um, I've got my label on the inside there. This one I've made out of vinyl and just a cotton interior. Um, so stick around if you want to see how to get this done. So I've got my pieces here and they are mostly prepped. I've got my outer um, main piece and that's in vinyl. I've got my second outer piece and I've got the same in my lining which I'm using a waterproof canvas today. Um, so these ones I haven't had to interface. I have already gone and attached my label to the middle there. These ones I have put Decoville Heavy um, out of my seam allowances and so the pattern comes with the pieces to cut those to size. I've got my zipper tape. Uh, the pattern will give you measurements but I pretty much just take my main piece. I kind of fit a piece of zipper tape to it and make sure it extends off uh, the ends a little bit and then I chop it and melt the ends so I've done all of that. I've got my zipper pull. Um, I haven't attached that yet and you will see why. And then I've got a binding um, ready to go that matches my lining. You don't have to match it. You can. Totally up to you. So those are all the things that you need. Not much at all. Um, it's great if you've got some small pieces of vinyl or canvas um, that you have lying around. It doesn't take up very much of it. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is find and clip my centers on all my pieces as well as my zipper tape. So I'll show you how to do or show you how I do my zipper tape. A lot of people are scared to cut into zipper tape, but it doesn't have to be that scary. So I'm going to just fold it in half there to find the center. You can mark it, but sometimes I've found that I've marked too far and it ends up um, getting like out of the seam allowance. So. Not ideal, so I'm just going to snip just a tiny, tiny little bit right on the edges there. And then what I'm going to do is take my lighter and just singe those so they don't fray. Just give it a little boop. The lighter there. Alright, so now I'm going to find the centers for these pieces as well. I don't need to snip these because they're waterproof canvas so I'm just going to crease them um, and so just folding them there is just giving me a little bit of a crease line there to follow so I'll do the same on my main panel like so. okay easy done so I'm going to start with the small piece here, which is the front panel. So I've got my exterior piece, my lining piece, and my zipper tape, and I've also got some clips handy. So the first thing I'm going to do is crack my zipper tape and separate the whole thing, which can seem a little bit frightening at first, but it actually comes together really easily in this pattern, so don't stress. So we're going to take our zipper tape and our exterior, we're going to pop our zipper tape right sides down with the teeth facing the curve. We're going to line up those centers. So I'm just going to find where my center is and line that up and clip it in place. This one is a straight uh, seam so it's not 
two different clips and I don't need many clips. Now the pattern will tell you to baste this zipper in place and you can totally do that if you don't want things moving around but I feel like it's such a small piece I am fine. So I'm just going to take my lining and pop that right sides down, centers lining up, right on top. And clip that in place. Making sure everything lines up. Now I'm sure you can see I'm not the most accurate cutter in the world, um, but it doesn't really matter with this pattern. You can trim it up as you need to, um, but I find that everything sort of works out in the end because you need to trim your uh, seam allowances before you bind anyway, so don't worry too much. I'm going to go ahead and sew along the straight line here uh, at the seam allowance that is mentioned in the pattern. So just along here. sure to back stitch at the beginning and end. Trim the tails away. And you've got something that looks like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is flip back my lining and my zipper. Give that a really good press. Uh, if you're just using cotton materials like um, quilting cotton and cotton canvas you can iron it if you like but I don't really find that necessary. Um, especially working with waterproof canvas and vinyl. So I'm just going to start by flipping that up and then a good press with my nail. And then I'm going to bend that back on itself. Make sure to give those a really good tug so you haven't got sort of a rolled piece of vinyl there. Everything's sitting nice and tight. And then I'm going to top stitch along this edge here, making sure that the lining is pulled as tight as it can be and the exterior is pulled so that zipper isn't getting squashed in, nothing's getting folded in the way. silver thread on holographic glitter so it's probably a bit difficult to see but I've got my top stitching right in there. Okay so that piece is done for now. Got our lining, got our zipper so we're going to put that aside and we're going to work on the next piece. So same thing again we're going to take our exterior main panel, our lining main panel, um, I've got my label attached in the middle there. I just went center and I think I went two and three quarter inches up and our other half of our zipper. So this time we're going to be working with this top edge here. So the top has this sort of um, like it sticks out a little bit further so you know that that's the top that you're working with. So I'm going to take that my exterior right side up, my zipper tape right side down with the teeth down pointing towards the bottom piece. I'm going to find those centers, same as before, match those up. And just like before, we're going to clip those in place. I think in the pattern it tells you, I'm not sure if it's at this stage or the next stage, to clip your zipper. 
could be later when you have to turn it. Um, but in all of the ones that I have made, I've never had to do that and I've never had a problem. So it's up to you how you want to get that done and maybe oh, that your machine can handle, but I've never found that to be necessary. Okay, so we've got that clipped in place. And same as before, if you feel more comfortable basting that in, you can. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pop my lining right sides down. Centers lining up and I'm going to clip that in as well. So along this curve here, and I'll be back making sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. use an awl sometimes to help me hold things in place and also make sure that everything's going flat and I'll just go nice and slow around that curve it's not a race Again, I think in the pattern, this is where it tells you to use pinking shears or to clip this curve. I've never found that I've needed to. Um, I feel like everything sits quite nicely once I turn it, but um, test it out for yourself. See how you go. The pattern explains how to do all of that uh, if you do find that's an issue. So I'm going to flip this around. And same thing as before, you want to make sure that you press this nice and flat, pulling out that zip tape, making sure that those edges are pulled right back and nothing is curled over the zip tape too far. So just give that a nice tug. Make sure that lining is sitting flat. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to top stitch all along here, just like before. Is where we're at so we've got our top stitching done again I've used a terrible color thread for demonstrating you can see it a bit better there so my top stitching is done along the edge there okay next step 
Okay, so the next step is going to be attaching our zipper pull. So I've got mine just here. So we're going to get that done. Now this part can be a little bit tricky if you're not super comfortable attaching zipper pulls. Um, so it might take a couple of times. I've done it lots of times and sometimes it can still take me a couple of times. So just be patient, it will get there. So something that you want to think about, or maybe you want to think about, is which direction your zipper will be opening. So I like my zipper opening to the left. So, oh, sorry, well, close to the left, opening to the right. So you want to think about that when you're putting your pull on. So if you'll notice on the case, the finished case, this piece down the bottom here of the front is your smaller front panel. Um, and then the main body is your larger piece. So if you want to kind of envision it closing like this. So you've got your main panel on the top and your front down here. So I want my zip pull closing this way. So I'm going to insert it on this end over here. So I'm going to lay that flat, sort of figure out where I'm at. Here's where it can get fiddly. So you're going to hold the ends of your zipper tape together and you want to insert the sides one at a time into your zipper pull into oop, the sides there and you just want to make sure that your teeth line up you want to make sure that what you're not doing is getting it sort of off centered like that because then your pieces won't line up um, so if you've cut your zipper tape nice and straight um, it should line up and if you're off by sort of one of your little teeth bits there. Um, it's not really going to matter either way, um, whether you're sort of one down or one up, but as long as you're not several teeth out of whack, um, it won't really matter too much. Everything should line up enough. So let's get this done. I'm going to start with one side, pop that on. Yes, it is much harder to do this with acrylics. So I'm going to sit that in about halfway. I'm going to add that side in, push it down. Give it a bit of a wiggle. And there we are attached. So now that you think you've... Uh, created a miracle and you've got your zipper pull on you're actually going to pull it off so now you've got your closed piece but your zipper is off again the reason we do this is that so your zipper can be closed all the way along so what you're going to do is same thing again crack it open probably just like an inch or two not too much certainly not all the way uh, crack it open pop your zipper head back on, your zipper pull back on, um, and that way it can sort of sit in the middle. So let's do that. Make sure you're going from the same way as before. So we want to go this way so that our zipper closes to this side. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to crack it about this much and do the same thing again. On, pop that side on, push it down, wiggle, wiggle, and on. And once you're on, you just want to make sure with your opening that you don't sort of have a big lump on one side. Um, mine, mm, it's not too bad. I think it's okay. It's good enough. Um, if you do have a big lump, that means that you've put them on. Um, you've put your two sides of your zipper tape on unevenly um, and that's going to create a bit of an ugly bubble. I mean, it's not going to affect, affect the way that it functions. Um, so it's up to you if you want to have another crack, but um, just be mindful of that. So I'm going to put my zipper somewhere in the middle here um, and just leave that there. All right, the next thing we're going to do is just pop this uh, sort of inside so we've got our outside our lining facing up I suppose and you're going to take your um, two sections so your small section and your main section and we're going to line up the bottoms now at this point here you can see that my cutting is not super accurate 
and my exterior is uh, a little bit larger than my lining. Um, I could go ahead and trim that if I wanted to. I mean, it is sticking out a little bit much here. If it was only a little bit, uh, I probably wouldn't bother because the binding's going to cover that. I just make sure that I'm catching my lining within my seam allowance, but I am actually going to trim it a little bit. Just a little bit. As I said earlier, it seems that this pattern kind of works even if your pieces are not cut perfectly. Let's trim that down. So now I'm going to line up my centers, right sides together. And clip that along your curved edge here. get down to your zipper here what you want to do is kind of just squash that nice and flat you are going to have a little bit of a bend at the top there of your zipper tape so don't worry too much about that just sort of fold as it naturally goes and we're just going to be stitching right over that so just making sure that everything is lining up as best as possible anyway then we'll pop a clip at the top just here just to hold it in place and drop it on the floor as you do on that side going to want to do is stitch along the bottom to close it up. If you've got a stubborn zipper that is difficult to open you're going to want to leave a little bit of this open before you've clipped it. Mine is quite easy to just pop like my finger in here or an awl or a pen and I'm able to open it so I like to keep it closed because it makes it a little bit easier um, but yeah think about whether you can do that from inside out if you can open your zipper. If you can't, you're going to be in trouble. If you stitch it closed, you're gonna to need to pop it open. Um, so either leave a little bit of an opening there or you can open it afterwards. So same as before, we're gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end and we're going to stitch all the way around the bottom like so. Also like to um, go over my zipper tape. Let's see on this, so this section here, I like to just back stitch over that once or twice, just to make sure that that is nice and secure there. Okay. Thank you. 
Já ir fazer o tempo nas horas. So what I'm going to do now is flip it over, just make sure that I've caught all the edges here. Sometimes, again, if you're not super accurate at cutting, things might not line up, but it looks like I caught here. And we're going to be going over this line again anyway with our binding. Um, so I'm going to be stitching a little bit further in. Um, so I'm not too worried about that there. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to trim your zipper, ta your zipper tape now and make sure that you use a lighter to burn that or melt that off so it doesn't fray. So I've got my good scissors, which is not ideal, but that's okay. At this point, you can trim down your seam allowance here a little bit if you want. I'm just gonna even that up just a tiny bit. You could clip this um, or trim it with pinking shears, but as I said earlier, um, I found that I don't need to. Everything seems to sit quite fine without it. Okay, and I'm just going to melt my ends here. And here. Okay. Before we get to the fun part of opening it up, we are now going to attach our binding. So I'm using waterproof canvas um, and I've just single folded that in half. It tends not to fray, um, but once I've sewn it on, I do like to just give it a quick run with my lighter just to melt it. Um, so I'll show you that in the end, but you just need a piece. Just got a scrap piece here from another project. Um, and so I know that's gonna be long enough uh, to cover. So we're just going to fold over one end tuck that raw edge in on the tip don't need to with waterproof canvas um, but I don't know I think it looks nicer and we're just going to clip that on I should probably mention that ahead of time I creased my waterproof canvas in half so I've got a nice center line and so it folds nice and easily. So I'm just fitting it on there. And so now that you've got your binding clipped on there, you're going to go ahead and sew. Usually I like to use a matching thread um, so that it doesn't show up too much in um, the seam. But with such a small project or such a small um, bound seam, you don't really notice. So I am just going to stick to the, the silver. I hope you guys see the stitches as well. So again, with my awl to hold everything in place. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Thank you. 
and make sure the end is tucked. You want to make sure that you flip it over and just double check that you've caught all the edges of your binding, which I seem to have. Now is when I'm going to take my lighter and I'm just going to melt the ends of my threads where I've clipped, but I'm also going to run the lighter along the edge of the waterproof canvas here just to melt it to prevent it from fraying at all. And I should probably try and do this on camera. Just run it along quickly like that. Oh, I'm gonna burn Okay, just like that. Okay, and we're pretty much done. So, again, all open now, or whatever you need to do, just crack that zip tape open. Now you want to flip the whole thing right side out. Give those corners there a good little poke out make sure that they're nice and sharp okay and you want to go along your bottom seam here and just give it a nice good push out and squish Make it nice and flat. Okay. okay, and there you have it. Your sunglasses case is all finished up. So we've got our back of it could do with a good little flat and a good little squish but that's the natural vinyl I suppose so you've got your top your zipper that's the front panel open it up got my tag in there the binding you can barely see it when you're using it so don't stress too much about it um, as long as those top edges there are probably not going to be the most seen but the rest of it's tucked all the way in the bottom there so you can barely tell and that's it. Quick little sew. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully this helps. I definitely recommend giving this pattern a go. Uh, you will probably get addicted. I have made too many to count. Uh, so there we go. Thanks again and have a wonderful week.